now. Uh, officially, welcome out. Welcome to the Market Watch Group Working Sessions. Trading Foundations Working Sessions. So we used to go through and cycle through a bunch of what we would consider, consider foundational topics. But we have a vast set of recordings for you now. So it's like if you have an aspect of your foundation that's missing, go take a look. You may not even realize it. So go take a look and be like, hey, is there anything in there that interests me that like, I, I'm, yeah, I'd like to review. Um, but the best way to learn is to do, right? And so what I want to do is use these sessions to do it and then say, oh, well, if you need help here, go to this and pull up the recording. Um, so that's that's my thought. Tell me if you think that's right or wrong or if you think that we do something better. Obviously, I am uh, 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 subscribed to the Be Water philosophy. I'm ready to adapt as I need to adapt in order to make sure this gets better and better. So my name is Scott. I'll be your host. Just meeting some of you for the first time. Um, some of our seasoned veterans, I told you that we were going to be getting a, a good invigoration of new blood, of, of new traders to welcome to the community. Um, it's, it's, they're going to be great. I have every confidence in our coaches. I have every confidence in what we do to help um, orient people in a similar fashion, right? Working off a trading plan, working off of a construct and, and rules and understanding psychology and record keeping and analytics and all the things that we um, tend to um, make a priority. Here's our disclaimers. As always, be careful. Education, illustration. We're not advisors. We're not brokers. We don't give recommendation or we or guidance. Um, and now to the platform. I, I don't have an agenda. The agenda is let's talk about trades. So first and foremost, let me pull up the mistaken trade. Um, I actually just saw like a series of text messages come out. I'm wondering if it has to do with that. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, and, uh, in fact, the, the, the fail safe mechanism is working out. Um, so I will, uh, make sure that we update that, but excellent. Okay. You should see my, my chart. Here is the SPY first and foremost, right? Our posture. Let's just, let's just check in real quickly. If you didn't see it this week, here it is. Um, on Sunday, we came in exactly the way we did last week. Very, very minimal amounts of change over the last several weeks in our market posture. You may not have a frame of reference yet until you've been here for a while and you start to get a sense of, well, is two good? Is five good? Right? Eh, you'll, you'll acquaint yourself with that. But let me tell you this. It rarely gets above seven or below minus seven. So those, that's out in your extremes, right? And that's, and that's on purpose, right? I, I, I don't know if I've seen a seven and a half or an eight market yet. I think maybe I have hit that early on in my scoring. A 5.75 is a very good bullish market, right? Anything between minus one and a half and one and a half, you're neutral. So one and a half is the bullish end of neutral. We get to two, two and a half. We're now into some bullish territory. We get to four and five. We're soundly bullish. We're at 5.75. The best we've seen in the last year, six and a half. I don't think we hit seven, did we? Did we get to seven? We got to six and something. Let me see. Six, seven, five, seven, six, seven, five, seven. Yeah, now there you can see in February and in March, we were hovering, but we were hovering in a, in a stronger area. And you can bet we were trading very bullishly during that time and did well. It was, a, it was a, You can see that. You can see that here. Where is February and March and January? That's back here. So during this, when this market was advancing, we were bullish and we were trying to get every window, get a 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 window, right? And then it hit this point. Now what? Well, we're bullish. We're looking for every window. What do I mean when I say a window? Well, this is the S&P. So when, when I hit this period of time right here, and this is in this area right here. This is a trading window. 
there are going to be signals that start showing up here and there will be signals that keep coming all the way to here depending on what market it is and some signals come off cycle we got a signal back here that was a little bit off cycle on a more of a defensive stock but but broadly speaking I want to I want to be thinking about getting on a good number of trades in that window and then managing them up just like I would have done back here. Here's the window. This is the SPY. This is a, a balanced representation. Here's a window. I, I, I'm hoping and imagining you can see the pattern that we have here. So if we look back and we're looking at April to May, would, where, would what would our posture tell us? In April and May, uh, in April and May, our posture would say that uh, April and May that we saw a little bit of a a little bit of a regression, and in fact, I would say that I I probably reacted a little more than the market posture told me to, right? Which means I got biased by something outside of the posture. That's on me. I got to think about that. I got to I got to reflect on that. But I was bullish the whole time, and I think we were all bullish the whole time. So would we be good to put bullish trades on on April 28th th through May 5th in this window? Here's April 28th through May 5th. Are we bullish? Yes. Were we bullish here? Yes. Were we bullish here? Yes. Would you also still find off-cycle trades where maybe through here there's a defensive or a financial? Yes. All of that is yes. That's why this context is so important, and I feel like it's especially important as a beginner how else are you deciding <laughs> if you don't start i don't i don't come into the market and then decide hey you know what here's what i'm gonna do today yeah, that sounds that sounds full of hubris like it's about me that's like the blade of grass saying to the lawnmower you know what here's how it's gonna go today that's not how it goes the lawnmower's like great yeah okay try it boom head cut off that's the first thing we're doing here is, or are we in line with the herd? The herd is representative of what? Institutions, large retail traders, the momentum of, of, of shorter term retail traders. That's the first thing. Be water. What does that mean? It means get in sync with the market. The market's the vessel. You're adapting. So did we accomplish that? Yes. What's next? Well, if I'm thinking about what am I going to trade? I want to have a watch list full of good stocks. Well, what makes a good stock? For me, liquidity is extremely important because I trade a lot of options. If you don't trade options, that's less of a consideration. But for me, I'm going to be looking to get the strongest stocks. Strong how? By price. By price. That's the most important. If, if it's strong and everybody likes it, then they'll buy it. And if they're all buying it, what's going to happen to the price? It's going to go up. And it's going to keep going up in a trend because that the demand over supply imbalance is maintaining. It's, it's not a secret, right? There's more buyers than sellers, and that creates trends sustainably. Now, who creates those trends? It's not you or me or anyone else in this room. We could all decide at the same time to put our money in one trade and have zero impact. It's institutions. That's 90%, which is a funny thing. I was raised on 80% 80, 80 to maybe 85. And it's soundly 90, right? Institutional money, which is not. Some people are like, oh, what are we going to do? We can't compete. Of course we can compete. That's the Titanic. We have different objectives. The Titanic is carrying people and, and moving a lot and slow and steady. I'm a speedboat. I'm going to zoom in, zoom out. I see the Titanic start to turn. I think, ooh, I can beat him. And I'm going to shoot in front for as long as I can. So I, I, we're not thinking about like, oh, these are, these are intimidating characteristics. Actually, I feel like these are the characteristics we need in order to say, yeah, do I have a chance at being consistently successful here? Absolutely. 100%. Can, should, will. It's just a process a combination of the scientific method with engineering principles. We just keep working and keep doing what we need, but it, it, it has to start with um, standardizing the process. That's why we have a trading plan. You, you can't, 
You can't look at the market one way this week and then a different way next week and then a different way the next week. And then, if, right? <laughs> if I got it, if I said, hey, my car's not working, I'm going to fix it. I have YouTube. I have a set of tools. I could go buy a book. I could go, I could change parts. Should I do that? Do I know what parts to change? <laughs> Now I could, I could go in and I could randomly change two parts. I might've fixed it and broke it at the same time and I never would have realized it. And you're probably thinking, God, that sounds like a really bad way to go about it. And I'd tell you that that's how 98% of traders go about it. <laughs> Fixing this and that at the same time. There's just no real focus and deliberation, right? Let's be very specific about what we're doing and why. So the first thing is this, standardize your process, right? Do I have a set of rules? Even just one set of rules. What's the best, easiest thing to build? Exactly what we're doing here. A bounce trade system. Right? And if you go and you look at the rules in your trading plan, and we're not on rules now, we're on risk management. Rules was last week. Does that mean you can't still work on your rules? Nope. You're, you have full autonomy. You get to work on whatever you want to work on, whenever you want to work on. So this is my system name. Bounce trades. Markets, what am I thinking about? I want high liquidity stocks that are in leading sectors. How do we know leading sectors? Well, that's part of what we do in market forecasting, right? On Sundays, we said, hey, technology and communication services are just rock solid, fantastic. We see signs of life in financials and, and uh, uh, consumer. Not so much industrials yet. So now I have an idea. I've got a bunch of good stocks in technology and a bunch of good stocks in financials that I've, or in, in, uh, in technology and communication services. I've been trading these over and over again. Apple, Microsoft, Google, Meta, uh, uh, NVIDIA, TSM, Micron, Palantir, um, Netflix. I mean, it's an enormous list of all these strong stocks. They're all in our watch list. We, we should have plenty of opportunities there, right? All we have to do is what? Wait for a signal. <gasps> a signal? What do you mean by that, Scott? Well, I mean, we pick a time frame, daily charts, and we wait for an entry. Now, I told you that in the most simple terms for a, for a bounce trade system, it boils down to this. Find a bull market, buy the dips. The end. Find a bull market, buy the dips. Is SPY a bull market? Yes. Well, then every time it dips, what do I think? I'm expecting it to bounce until it proves me otherwise. I'm going to expect it because that's what it's been doing. That's why we look for these is patterns, right? Now, is this thing done? Could go a little higher. I actually put on a calendar spread, a calendar spread. And what is my intention with the calendar spread time? My thought process is, I'm going to change colors for this real quickly, that from right here, this thing's probably going to pull back and it might go sideways for a little bit and then it might start to turn again, just like it did over here. And in that period of time, if that happens, guess what? <laughs> I'll make 50, 60 percent on that calendar spread. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Um, it's, a, it's a trade that makes sense when implied volatility is low. Well, we know from our market posture that the VIX is very low. That means options are cheap. Okay, great. Good information. This is all good information that plays into how we make decisions. Right now, what would be thinking? I put one new trade on, had a good start. Now it's kind of stalling. Okay, I'm going to leave it. That's CL for anyone who took it. A, a lot of other trades have been getting closed. Apple, Google, um, AVGO. They hit targets. They hit primary targets. Then they, then they didn't get to their... They didn't get to their good targets. But I can't just be like, if I'm flying a plane and I'm heading to Chicago and I start running out of gas, I'm not going to be like, well, let's see what happens. I'm going to land a plane. You didn't make it. Nice try. Right? That's where I'm at with the trades. If I see, so for example, this is one that we looked at together. Um, let, me, let me hide these for just one second and let me go to AVGO. Okay, now, and, and I'll be honest with you, it could have been preemptive. 
Uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like that we crossed. And I ultimately closed this, the, the, another portion of my trade. I have one piece left. One piece left. Small piece. So uh, I booked a gain up in this area here automatically. I think it was actually right here. 1745. Got a 1745. Boom. Took it. The next target was up here. That's we're like, hey, can this thing get up there? We knew it was pretty lucrative. We we're going to get four to one if it got up there. Still might get up there. In fact, if you look at these Heiken Ashi candles that I love for trade management, this looks just fine. And you would just move your stop up a little bit more. Maybe even not that much, but just a little bit more. And if tomorrow it still can't break through, you'll move your stop up a little bit more. And if tomorrow it breaks through, well done. What did you just do? You just let your winners run, which is difficult. Um, some of you maybe have been through the little psychology profile we, we've, we go through with cutting losses short and letting winners run. We'll, we'll do it again sometime in the near future for those who haven't. Uh, but there's a study conducted in the, in the 80s that won a Nobel Prize in economics for behavioral finance. It's basically the, the building blocks of trading psychology. And essentially what it... What it concluded was that 85% of average investors, you and I in this room, 85% are predisposed to cutting their winners short and letting their losers run. 85%. Why? Because the pain we feel from loss is, is much greater than the pleasure we feel from gain. And we get into these loss aversion situations where rather than take a loss, we stay in. Then <clears throat> when we, we stay in and we just keep getting punished for it, then all of a sudden we have a winning trade. Oh, we may, we're making a little money. And then what do we think? Oh my God, if I don't hurry and take it, the market's going to take it, take it away from me. And I want you to think about the emotions at play. You've got fear when you're losing and hope. No, I'm sorry. You've got, you want that. You've got hope when you're losing and fear when you're winning. That sounds back ass words, right? Fear when we're winning? No, we should be hopeful that my two to one becomes a three to one and my three to one becomes a four to one because that's in the cards. That's why we took the trade. Does it always get there? No. Do I want to make as much as I can if it's not going to get there? Yes. Um, but I, I want to be fearful when things start to go wrong. Right? Not hopeful. Not like, oh, maybe it'll come back. I'll take a chance. See what happens. No, follow the plan. The plan is developed with a stop loss so that if this thing back in this situation here had broken down below, we would have gone down. This was support. By the time it turned right here, we said, this is support. That's the premise. That's a bounce trade. What do you, when I say a bounce, you're like, what do you mean bounce? It's bouncing off of support, trying to get to resistance. Well, the last resistance was up here. It had a 50% retracement. So my thought was, can we get there again? Let's give it a shot. Right? So now what? So when it got here, a third, I only bought three shares. It was a $1,700 stock, so $5,000 trade. Um, got up here, take one off, boom. It, it now has rolled over. Take another one off and move the stop. So I've, I've now booked two gains. There's one left. That's it. That's how I'm managing the trade. Getting in is the easy part. I, I, if you haven't found that out yet, you will soon. Getting in is the easy part. It's easy to, I can get in trades all along. Boom, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Get in, buy it. You gain or lose. You define yourself as a trader with your exits. Therefore, with your exit strategies, um, if you if you trade with a service, you're going to find that they get you into trades, but they rarely get you out on time. They sort of leave you on your own like, oh, well, we, we got you here, you know. Um, admittedly, I do that with our alerts because I'm not here to to keep handing you fish. Right? I'm, I'll give you a good lure. Give you, I'll bait your hook. 
But I want you managing your trades. I want you going through these risk to reward considerations, tightening stops. When do I take some? How much do I take? How do I orient myself around market posture? Does a 5.75 promote me to want to hold trades a little longer and give them an, an opportunity to come to fruition? One, 100% yes. If you're in a two market, a zero market, and things start to go wrong, yeah, you're going to bail. You're like, I'm done. There's no market here to entice me to want to stay with this trade. So that is, uh, th there is that. Now, let me, <clears throat> it's gone quiet. Is it because you're mesmerized? I like to assume when it gets quiet, people are mesmerized. I don't know where I got that notion from, but I've, I've, I've latched onto it through the years. <laughs> uh, so much so that you're like, I'm, I'm speechless, speechless Scott. So let's talk about SPY then. So the, the bounce trades we, we put on a while back. Um, let's actually not take, talk about that yet. Let's talk about Apple first. When did the Apple alert come out? The Apple alert came out. Oh, look, I have my window. I have my window drawn, which is perfect. Perfect, because I'm going to go yellow. The signal came right here. Yeah, you see that box and arrow? So I mapped the window, and I was right at the start of that window. That's when the Apple signal came. It had a hiccup, and we said, hey, sometimes they hiccup. Don't lose, don't lose confidence in this thing yet. And now what? And now it recovered and it's up here. Okay. And your, your stochastics is flattening out. Your candles are slowing down. So what can you be doing? Scale out, tighten your stop. So you start taking some profit. You start moving your stops tighter and tighter so that if today was the last day and tomorrow we sell off, guess what? You locked it in. Well done. You let your winners run. When we put this trade out, our time frame was seven to nine days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. It should all be right in line with what we're talking about and what we're doing, right? So that's one. Are we, are we trading it now? Is it like, hey, can I get in now? Of course not. This party is over. The cops are here. There's no more alcohol. This isn't a party. This is done. We need to go rest hydrate. We'll have another one coming our way soon. Yes. Um, so it's important for us to, to, to know, is it, is it close, etc. cetera. Um, okay. Let's keep talking about it then. What's another one? Um, we put a trade out on Google around the same time. Let's pull that up. Google. When did it come out? came out back here now some people may have closed some i closed one on a target two but kept one just like i'm doing with avgo closed one kept one now now the third one is paying dividends the whole trade's profitable now 20 years ago when i started trading do you think i did that no i'd be like oh i want everything to get to my target i'm gonna hold it all it's all gonna go to my target and I'm not doing it anymore. What does that tell you about that strategy? If after 20, no sound. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How about sound now? Is the sound on? Sandy said no, but it could be on her end. Yes, David, thank you for being quick. Awesome. Okay, so Google. So you can kind of see, right? So I, I like to have one contract about halfway up, maybe a little further, automatic. It gets there, you take it, you lock it in. If it starts to pull back, don't, don't, don't just bail. Maybe you close another one, make sure you lock a little more profit in. If it falls and the third one breaks even, you made money on two, broke even on the third, and you gave it every single chance you could. Would you give it the same chance if the market was a three and a half, Scott? No. Whoever asked that question, that's an amazing question. I would not. If it was a two, 
No, of course not. That's a neutral market, not a bullish market. In a bullish market, I want to give bulls a chance to be bullish. Let the bulls be bulls. Um, yeah, does this make sense? So, do you have a trade on? Let's use yours. Uh, what are some other ones we've been looking at while you start to bring that at me? This is one I'm still in. I got in here. So let's talk about this. And press yesterday's like, is it still valid? It's valid to me. Here's the, nope, I don't want yellow now. Let's go back to pink. That's when we first got this trade right here. That was the, uh, that's when we first discussed. I don't remember if this was an alert or if we built this in a live class. Um, uh, so. Yes. Um, let me see. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find. Okay, let's see. Yes, I couldn't find the exact date, but that was the that was what happened. We got in. The next day was perfect. It's like, oh man, we're geniuses. We're so smart. <laughs> And then what? And then it engulfed. Did it engulf with a big chunk of volume? Nope. So I said, hey, I gave back. I'm back at break even again. And then again, and then again, I'm still there. But it's still a hiccup. I'm not wrong unless we get through this level here. I'm going to start running out of time if I'm not careful. Luckily, the time was pretty cheap. But in the next day or two, I need this to do something like this. If it doesn't, will I carry this through the weekend? No. No. It's got to start, right? We gave it a, we gave it the first chance and now it's on the second chance and it's like the hiccup can't just keep going. So, here in the next day or two, if I don't see something like this, uh that's that's going to be the end of the road. And then I'll have a small loss. I'll just be like, "Okay, it didn't work. I thought it was going to, it didn't." That's managing a losing trade. This is slightly down. It's four days later. It's at the same place. That time decay has pulled some, some value away from it, right? So how do we manage a winning trade? How do we manage a losing trade? How do I manage a trade that's just getting going? So here's another one from last week's alerts. This is from our watch. All of these are from our watch list, you'll notice. Here is CL, maybe. My keyboard keyboard will work. CL. Okay, what happened? We looked to enter here as it crossed, right, in that zone. First day, fantastic. Next day, what? It's a hiccup. Am I wrong? Should I, should I bail? Imagine if you bailed over here when it just sort of paused, pulled, and then what? Bing, 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 bing. Now, when I say imagine, it's because I did all of it. It was, a start, it was a good reminder for me to be like, hey, at least hold one. At least one. Because it never really got that bad. This day wasn't worse than the last day and hardly worse than the day before that. It really just sat there. So if I, if I took profit on one here, that's number one. Why not just... Take a little off here and then hold on so we could get number three here. Now, since that time, have I done it with resulting trades? Yep. And it's made, um, it's paid dividends. So what am I going to do with it right now? I'm going to be patient. It still looks just fine, right? It still looks just fine. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose confidence in this trade. Okay. Questions. Comments, concerns. Now, let's say you're in a trade. I think I have something on in here. I think I have CL. 
I I do have CL. Um, so let's say I have this uh, this CL trade. There you go. Uh, it's it's underwater twelve dollars. It's hard. That's break even. That's break even. But let's say I decided. Um, oh, I don't have managing orders on this. What were my orders? Well, let's go place a couple of orders. Sometimes that's what we need. We'll skip the, we'll push the calendar spread to the big, to the advanced session. At 6.45, we'll take a few minutes as a break, uh, stretch our legs, get in water, and then at 6.50, we'll, the, we'll kick on with the, with the advanced folks. We're going to talk about that calendar spread. So if you're interested, hang around. Stick around, hang out, see how it goes. Um, so when I originally put this trade on, oh, I don't have it here. Let me get the alert. Let me get the alert. It's quiet out there. Is what I'm saying making sense? Is it is it shedding light or 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 uh, making it more confusing? Give me your give me your take on on this discussion today. Are we on point? Yes, Clint said. Good. 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 Shedding light. Love it. Um, so we originally got in at 96.90 ish and had a stop at 95.30. So let's go in here. 96.90, it's at 97.04. I don't think I got in there. I think I got in at 97. Uh, uh, what's my price? Oh, never mind. I'm in an option. I can't tell. Okay, what was my what was my stop? C L. Uh, 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 this was stop around ninety five thirty. Target around one hundred one fifty. Take profit at ninety nine. Okay, so let's get those let's get those in here. So let's put ninety nine here. Uh, I read it and then I don't even pay attention to it myself. The short term memory is so bad. 95.30 and uh, 101.50. 95.30. That can't be right. Yes, it is right. 95.30. And then let's reorder. So, what have I done? If you're on Thinkorswim, I, other models may not function like this, but what I'm doing here is I'm establishing slices. These dotted lines, those are the slices. What does that mean? That means I want to mark it. Not, this, 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 the only meaning this model has is the meaning I give it. I have to, I have to install the context, right? So I have to say at 95.30, I'm wrong. I'm going to reorder these so that I can play with them, okay? And the other thing that I can do with these, which is very cool. Now, let me show you this. I'm going to move this down. So that these lines, so what I did is I'm just clicking in the blank space. That lets me move the chart back and forth. I move the chart so my lines are at the left. Then I go to these numbers on the bottom. This is a little more delicate. I'm going to click and drag to the right in a straight line. Don't deviate or it'll mess it up. You got to go straight across. And you'll notice I'm actually just pulling that 102 with me. And I'm going to keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, let it go. It adjusts. Now, I don't care what happens above 102.50. I don't care what happens below 94. I care what happens at these specific levels here. That's what my trade is based on. If it drops to 95.30, and let's give it to Friday. One, two. I'm around a little under $200 a risk, right? 200 if it gets up to 99, I'm getting almost one and a half to one, which is about what I would like to see. One and a half to one. You're not always going to get two to one at your first level of taking profit. Um, I have four contracts. I'm only going to sell one contract though. If it gets to that point, 200, and, let's call it 300 bucks just for round numbers. I'll sell one of them and I'll make a $75 gain. That's it. 75 bucks, $75, right? $75 in gain and now I only have three contracts. So now my potential risk is diminished. Now it's easier to manage this trade. I can hold those three better, longer, right? Um, 
What's the what's the big prize? If I get up to 10150, I'm getting 829. My initial risk less than 200. What's my reward to risk ratio on this trade? 4 to 1. 4 to 1. Not on all of it. Three contracts. The other contract we're we're willing to accept closer to 1 and a half to 1. Maybe 2 to 1 depending on the level. Ah, David says not used to this approach. Let's talk about it. Is it helpful to see this perspective? Um, do you find that you're, a, I mean, let's let, and, and if you, for those of you who are here, are you, are you a swing trader? Is this what you're trying to do? If you're not a swing trader, what are you? Are you a day trader? Are you a position trader, a trend trader? Um, certainly how, how we characterize ourselves is going to, uh, help dictate how we manage and, and set rules for trades. Um, as a swing trader, what am I looking for? One swing, one. This move of getting up here to 101.50, of first target at 99, of stop down here, this is one move. Bang. I got it drawn with one line. Where did that line come from? Came from here. Came from in here. Mm, here. Not all of them. Sometimes it goes and it just doesn't get that far. So do we have to be, yeah, that's why we have a target halfway up. If it only does this move this time, we'll sell half right there and then we'll end up getting out. Now let's assume it just kept falling apart um, like it did over here. So that's that's what we're looking at, right? Is how do we how do we manage this? First and foremost, I'm going to go back when I when I got to this point, I said, "All right, let's find some moves that are enticing to us." Right? That are the this if I'm going to catch something, I want that. And then we have these secondary moves, right? That are just not quite as much Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six potential bullish opportunities on this chart. Three of them were nice, chunky, big moves. Three of them were like, oh, we did okay. Hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. That's my thought process here. So what do I have? I'm going to, I've got one here, three here. So what do I have right now? I've got nothing but a potential. I think I have a little bit of gain on this, but not much. A little bit of gain. Um, because I'm, I want to see. I want to see if it at least gets to here. I don't want to bail on this candle only to watch tomorrow do this and then Friday do this. And I'm halfway up and then I'm, I'm starting to think, okay, are we going to get this last little piece? Can I just trail stop on up into that? Right? So it's important for me to understand historically, how does a stock move? That's why I like to trade the same stocks over and over and over again. Um, because it, it allows me to, uh, you know, find this. If I get this, I get four to one. Four to one. I don't, I don't need a lot of those to really make an enormous difference on my account, right? I, I don't need that many of those. So if I can get one and a half to one and then, you know, three to one and then you know, and I just keep going. Then when the loss does come like right here, that I would say that's the seventh trade. OK, because right there so far what I've given you. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to give you a second one. That's the eighth trade right here. So now I have eight trades. Big winner, little winner, little winner, loser. Big winner, loser. Little winner, big winner. And now we're in a trade. Is this the kind of stock I'm interested in? I like those odds. I like those odds. 
Right. When it's wrong, is it like catastrophic? Am I like, oh my God, I've lost so much money. No, I, I can manage that. I'll hopefully not take a full loss, but be able to, to salvage some of that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Sometimes I think it's good for us to just kind of step back, look at the big picture so that when you're in the trade and you're like, wait a second, is it, is it supposed to feel like this? <laughs> if you're uncertain, yeah, right? It's not like we get in and it just marches on up to our target. Hoorah. This is what we have to prepare for right here. Um, okay, I'm going to give us three minutes. We've been going for a little while. I'm going to actually stop the recording. Um, I'm going to stop.